uh, you're a rock and roll band, no question, and so you're in a sense entertainment, but you clearly take a stand politically too. So does this translate to your audiences or to the shows you book in any way? Uh, I think definitely that uh, our crowd and audience recognize that we have uh, political opinions throughout the say, and I mean, all people does, but uh, I think um, for us, it's what we like to write about when we write songs, because uh, yeah, we don't really find inspiration to write about love, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just like a, a natural topic for us or how to say. Uh, but the main goal with the band is not to be political or be like spokespersons for a no. political party. We just express our uh, feelings and thoughts and uh, ideology because <laughs> we like to write about that. It gives us energy or how to yeah. say. Yeah. Like where, where do you find your uh, your will and your energy and maybe your anger and lust to change things mm -hmm. and it in injustment in society. So yeah, that's that's what we, we write about basically. Yeah. yeah. Or like views on life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do have following questions about it because I was wondering, uh, do you find it hard to mix uh, politics with this kind of uh, party tear tear tearful atmosphere you, you convey in your sound? Because sometimes it's like heavyweight topics, so it's the, you have to find the balance. I think it's kind of like life, you know, it's, it's, it's both. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not just serious all the time. You want to have, you know, fun also, and and uh, uh, yeah, and like Cecilia said, we are a rock and roll band, so uh, we like to have fun with our audience, and yeah. yeah. So yeah, when you go, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's like the main goal to make people come together and enjoy themselves, and if they like, uh, also find the will and energy to try to like change something or help someone and that's great of course yeah 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 because also uh, i've noticed you in you have lines such as uh, i don't want to leave my life alone and isolated for example in the in this song midnight uh, do you think we are as a whole a bit of uh, a bit alienated or like do we need more uh, communal efforts or even parties yeah, I mean, uh, human beings are not made to live on their own. And uh, I think it's dangerous for us, actually. And yeah. uh, for mental health, it's not good at all. I mean, no. we, people and humans, we depend on each other. So we like, we, 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 we need a context. And to have that context and to be happy, I believe that you need to have um, I mean, that people need to have uh, similar, what do you call it, Frida, help me. Um, uh, similar, not, um, not expectations, like uh, similar, um, yeah, I lost the sorry, <laughs> you, have, you need to have, it, a society won't be a good society if some people are super poor and have nothing no. and they can't afford yeah. to get and others have access to, I mean, uh, cultural capital. Uh, yeah, like an equal, equal. Um... Yeah, environment. And then we come to the word again. <laughs> yeah. No, I perfectly get what you mean. So yeah. we were here, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, and I think that song too was like when we were in the pandemic and and you were longing for, you know, you, you know, get together with people and, you know. Yes. You, you felt like sometimes you got too isolated and yeah. of course for a good reason but yeah it's kind of longing for yeah i know you friend, so. spent the, the lockdown alone like no nobody else at home so i know what you mean Not good. yeah <laughs> uh so um uh, well uh related to that so how are these kind of things in Sweden. There's like music scenes that blend with social movements or like there's something there or it seems, I don't know if, if I'm... 
is pressing what I want to ask me. Yeah, I think I think that the, there's still like a um, punk scene there that is doing well, but then then it's uh, it's kind of hard for the scene because a lot of the small clubs are closing down. So it's kind of hard to to get places to play and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but when now when we did the tour in uh, in in Sweden, we had uh, we played with some bands like uh, yeah, uh, younger bands and uh, yeah, it's really really cool to see that the scene is alive. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's more difficult now because I mean, when uh, we were kids, you mm. have like a rehearsal rooms from the mm. camp, very cheap and mm -hmm. doesn't really exist anymore. And also, as Frida says, all the small stages that are also for youth, they close down because there are no economical interest or, um, yeah. yeah, they don't make enough money, basically. So uh, that's what, what it's all about nowadays. Uh, it, yeah. it matters is how much uh, yeah, it can. benefits, yeah. yeah. Not other people, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's much harder now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, the same you over need here. to be yeah. like, in Sweden you need to be like 18 years old to be able to go to a venue where they sell alcohol. So that means that uh, Everyone that is younger than eighteen, they they are kind of cut out from the yeah. from the scene, and that's a pity. Yeah, yeah it's, I th I feel it sometimes it's getting harder to be like a teenager in a city, for example. Like there's few options, so yeah, it's a pity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have a party with me, everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna move on to questions about uh, your latest album. Um, so I wanted to ask about the the title and its meaning because I sense there's a lot of irony to it. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are right. I mean, <laughs> uh, we are atheists in the band, so it's not like we started to believe in God or. Uh, anything else uh, but uh, but it's like it's uh, it's what you always say or what you always say what leaders in the world usually say and uh, use that phrase to somehow uh, legitimate themselves and what they do they have like yeah but I have God on my side yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times when you hear someone saying, God bless you all, like Donald Trump, for example, do you really want to be blessed by God through Donald Trump? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, no, of course there are people, also, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also it's like, uh, God bless you all. It's like, yeah, all the like... Uh, kind of like the, the corruption that's like... Uh, 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 from the church, from the leaders, from the people with power. Uh, it's uh, it's that something to believe in, you know. Uh, do you want to be blessed by that? And uh, often it's like taking advantage of, of yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the right thing to say, like the, the little people, but, you know, the, the people who are struggling. And then it's it's uh, easier to, yeah, take advantage and, and uh, uh capitalize on on it so yeah yeah no it's it's perfectly clear <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Sure, it's an institution of power of course mm. uh, but mm. at the same time i mean uh, the church is not all bad of course i mean they do a lot of good things mm -hmm. uh, like that for refugees and do before like they take care of homeless people yeah immigrants so it's it's not like we're criticizing all church or no. anything just that we that it's also a um a, 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 a function of power that you have to like look yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah they belong to a bigger power extractors that yeah. have an effect on on people and you know a bad effect yeah yeah 
Yeah. yeah, but then it's not the people helping uh, others now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, in fact, in the in the video you you recorded for the song "God Bless You All," you do present yourself as some sort of a uh, religious leader. That uh, I guess it's a play on the on the same things we were talking about. But do you think it works as some kind of metaphor too? Like, would you say this is this, there's some similarity between those roles and the musicians uh, when they present themselves on the stage? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, for sure. Uh, because, I mean, we could do, like, whatever, basically, on stage, and people were like, whoa! Yeah. About what, what the fuck did she say? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have a responsibility, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah you get some power, like, mm. yeah. And it is some kind of like a hype like that uh, towards like a rock band or a football team or whatever. I mean, people can, of course, also obsess about that and be very aggressive to people yeah. who don't be with their taste in music or yeah. football team or soccer team or whatever it is. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely um, we try to play with that also. Yeah. Okay. In, in the song and in the video, yes. Yeah. And what's your experience regarding that? Like, you because you're aware of this power, this responsibility. Are you? Uh, do you consider it when you're approaching uh, new songs or new shows, or uh, like? I I don't know. Do you have any ideas on how to deal with that, or do you have bad or good experiences with people like really being uh, hardcore about what you do, or? People will always and can always, of course, have their opinions, and we are only people, or how to say, and yeah. we take responsibility for ourselves and our actions. Uh, so, I mean, of course, we are aware that people look at us and the value, or how to say what we do and what we say, but at the same time, um, I don't, or at least I feel that I don't, I don't want to be like a role model for people. Yeah. I, I'm not a perfect person, far from. I mean, I have many, many flaws and I'm not perfect at all. So I, I, I don't see myself as a good role model or how to say yeah. that. It's great if uh, we're uh, able to inspire people and if people like what we do, of course, but mm. it can somehow we can only take responsible for ourselves yeah not for other yeah yeah obviously yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i think that depends on like kind of what you're what you what you bring into the word 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 role model because mm -hmm. uh for me now it comes into kind of another subject but for me when i was uh little girl like it was really important for me to have role models in music and role mm -hmm. models that inspired me so yeah. I think in a way maybe me and Cecilia maybe don't see ourselves as role models but if we could be role models for like little girls or or you know they don't see that many like women play and stuff like that uh, I see that as like a fantastic thing and then maybe, I mean, of course, <laughs> we're not perfect people, but it's it's nice to be like a role model. You can see like, oh, there, there's women that have kids and, uh, you know, you don't have to have kids, of course, but, you know, you, you're doing their own thing and, uh, and can get uh, inspired from that. Yeah, of course, it's about representation and seeing yourself in others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in that way, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to be a role model yeah. for, in that way. But uh, uh, I'm not the per like Cecilia said, we're not perfect people, so no one, no one is. So, yeah, no yeah. One is. yeah. But that, that's what what I meant a little bit. I mean, it's nice to be a uh, inspiration, but I think. Yeah like a little bit weird or dangerous or whatever when people put you on a pedestal and you just like a role model for how you want to be or how to supposed say. to be yeah yeah we're not 
we're not, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> maybe we're not at all what you really want to be. But uh, what we do on stage and with our music, that you like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but as you said, it depends on what you put in the world role model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so connecting to, to what Peter was, uh, was saying, uh, we've noticed that you both have these girls to the front uh, tattoos. Uh, which, after all, it's a riot girl motto. Are you influenced by uh, any feminist movements within music? Are, if so, which ones or, or which were your role models when you were younger? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to start, Cecilia? Should I start? <laughs> no, I mean, when I, when I grew up, I was like, yeah, like, like I said, I was really like uh, searching for it because it wasn't you know, that common, but so when, uh, uh, I mean, the first uh, really like, uh, yeah, I, I guess Courtney Love was the, like the first mm -hmm. one I saw, you know, putting her leg on the, on the um, monitor and just screaming, you know, her lungs out. And I was like, wow, you can do that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, that was like a huge thing for me. And also like seeing Shania Sul, the bass player in the White Zombie, uh, also like a great songwriter doing this heavy riffs and, uh, um, and Darcy from, from Smashing Pumpkins and yep. of course Jennifer Finch from L7, uh, Catherine Hanna and yeah I can go on but uh, that was like when that kind of uh, in the early 90s that was yeah huge huge for yeah. me and like what you could do was like wow uh, and I went that, that by that time I went to to music high school and everyone was so like, oh, you have to, you know, be a shredder. You have to be so good. Like I was like, no, fuck that. I just want to, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> my head and, <laughs> and, and rock. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, very influenced by, by, by that. Uh, yeah, it was kind of it, it, like, um, mixed between the grunge i mean the grunge scene and the riot girl scene was kind of a a, a mix i guess yeah yeah but i mean i think that the riot girl 90s scene was very important to all females uh, that yeah. walked during that time because it really like redefined uh, how you can be as a female and mm -hmm. a woman or a girl i mean mm -hmm. uh, how to behave uh, what you're allowed to do, that you can also take like a big place in a masculine context, uh, yeah. what, to, what to wear, who to love. I mean, it, it was a lot of things that really came out of that, that was of course already there somehow in society bubbling, but then it kind of exploded. And I think that if you grew up in the early 90s, you didn't really miss that yeah and of course i mean it, it's it was a huge inspiration i'm a little younger than frida so i yeah i didn't really start looking before that or how to say mm -hmm. so yeah for yeah, me it's and more like yeah of course i can do that i didn't really think about that i couldn't or how to say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's nice that's really you know nice that then it really changed something, you know, so that's, and also I have to say super including of, you know, the, um, queer. Uh, the yeah. queer movement and yeah, so not only, you know, females, but also very including yeah. of the, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it definitely so, opened a few doors for yeah. people, so that's important, yeah, yeah. that's why I wanted to ask. <laughs> yeah. Going back to you, uh, I'd say you're a band that belongs to the States. Would you agree? Like, do you? Like, yeah, you definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we are a live band. Uh, that's where you uh, can explore us or how to say enjoy us the best. But I think we come out very good on uh, recordings too. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
But if yeah. you want the, like the full experience, I would say you go to a baboon That's show true. live, you know, concert. Yeah. Yeah, and after 10 albums and so many anthem-like and extremely catchy songs, is it easy to choose your set list? Because you have so many to choose from. No, it's hell. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> For the summer now, it's like, especially now, it, you know, the festivals, we have to play a shorter set. Yeah. It's, no, no, and now we have the new songs too, so it's it's not easy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any favorite problem? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard when you have different favorites too. <laughs> so it gets more complicated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I won't ask anything more about this. <laughs> I won't get into this. Okay. Sensitive right now, actually. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> Okay, and um, it, tell me something about the the cover you of uh, "Have a Party with Me" by the by Lady Medusa that you did. Why? How? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what can we say about that guy? He's just a crazy guy from Sweden. You know, he's actually a very talented mm -hmm. uh, musician, but he he got refused from. <laughs> from like labels and people were writing you know really bad reviews and he just got flipped he, he's, he, he got flipped in the head and you're starting to writing these like really weird songs yeah. that in the van you know the tour van we, we, we or the tour bus we it's so fun to 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 listen to those songs but this have a party with me it's yeah uh it's a bit more thought, serious song from it's a little it. bit more serious yeah. for being yeah. him yeah <laughs> and we thought yeah that we could do a cover of that yeah and also since the pandemic we felt like it would fit to do something because you were uh, i mean all people were longing to go out and enjoy themselves and meet people again so it felt like it could be a little bit of an anthem or how to say post corona <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a, definitely a party song and it works. Yeah. Yeah. The excitement of getting out again, yeah. 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 But that, that it's also important to point out, I think we did that in the video, that uh, we write something that it's not super good to like drink too much and party too much. No, but, because he he died he, from yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's not all fun. It's not all fun, no. Well, or it's fun until it's not. So, yeah. yeah, it's fun until it's not. Yeah, <laughs> true. So, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you were mentioning the pandemic. Uh, was it hard for you uh, as a band, especially as a live band, not to play? Or uh, did you have plans that went to hell? Or was it relatively OK? I don't know. I think it was like it was if it could if a pandemic could be in a good timing it was a good timing for us <laughs> because we had been touring like a lot and our plan was to record a new album mm -hmm. then the pandemic was a little bit too long yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so we we had to wait to release the album so that's why we released uh, I never say good night uh, yeah. and we wrote some more songs and uh, because we felt like we we want to after we release an album we really want to tour we don't want to release an album and then it's nothing uh so but i mean in the band i think we i mean we're different people and and we we, we took the pandemic quite differently i think um yeah yeah, yeah but of course it affected us of course yeah is we couldn't like do what we love and you know yeah. make proud and our fans and yeah play music which we really love to do mm -hmm. and I feel like if when you get it, yeah look back on it uh, we lost some um, energy I would say yeah um, so we had to like build that up again but yeah. Yeah, at the same time for us, Corona didn't hit at a super bad time because we weren't planning a tour and we mm. 
weren't planning like to release an album like the next day. So yeah, yeah, for us the timing was okay, but for a lot of other bands, it the timing was really not good. And I mean, you, you bands that release albums during the pandemic, it's oh. like they are gone. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No them. It's like they just disappeared into a big yeah. like, hole somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have some friends that put out an album and like in two days the pandemic hit and it yeah. got lost. Like they had to do another one and yeah, I continue with that and it's uh, kind of a uh, shame. So yeah, that's why I, well, I was asking. Yeah, and and also of course like when you're used to like being touring a lot and you get the you know the happy you know the adrenaline the you know endorphins and then you're used to meeting your your audience and you know getting yeah. good vibes and then you you don't get that yeah. uh, it really hits you so there's something yeah. big missing definitely yeah. yeah yeah but it was really nice we went to um uh, we did some uh, like Corona concerts, sitting down audience, and uh, I saw one on YouTube, and there was just one guy in the audience. Could it be? Oh, that no, that was another one. That was like a live stream we did in in, oh, yeah. uh, in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was, saw that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the, the like the Corona concert when we when uh, that we did that in was that in in Basque country Cecilia we did that yeah. yes yeah yeah where I'm from the Basque country originally so yeah yeah I, or or I th it was in uh, Victoria Gasteiz Victoria um, Gasteiz yeah yeah, yeah. In because Basque, then everyone had to sit down and they were like jumping in the chairs like uh, it, was, <laughs> it was so nice. much fun yeah. yeah. Fun to say, yeah. People like really wanted to, like, but they weren't, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird but fun, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I have a last question not related to any of this, uh, because I'm also curious about your relationship with Cuba. Because according to your own website, uh, you are, quote, a socialistic band and have a special love for Cuba. So how did you end up uh, playing and recording there? Uh, we um, had a Swedish label uh, that's called Nationaal uh, that put up a festival in Havana mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Cuba. Uh, so that's what took us there. Uh, and uh, this label, uh, it, it doesn't exist anymore, but it had like a, a socialistic, um, how do you say, like, um, uh, culture. Like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's how we get up there uh, from the beginning. And then they started also to have like a, like a collaboration with a, a, a shooting Cuba. So some Cuban musicians also came to Sweden to play festivals. Uh, but I don't think that collab exists anymore. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. A, yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah, when we went there, like, uh, yeah, the last time we, we also recorded uh, the Havana sessions and uh, with some Cuban uh, musicians and yeah uh, so yeah we really like the vibe there and uh, yeah had, had great times yeah like also the fact when you are like in a country and it's pretty much the only of the bits around there where you can like walk the streets without getting robbed or murdered and you don't have to be at like gay places and yeah. I mean, that's of course because they have a different system than other <laughs> the uh, so that's also like kind of that's very unique and amazing uh, and for us who lives in a totally like capital it's also very nice to be somewhere where 
no commercial, no yeah. pressure on how you should look, what you should wear, that you're like, you know, too fat, too thin, uh, too short hair, too long hair, I don't know, everything about you is just wrong all the time when you go outside the door at home in Sweden mm. because you get so much information about how stuff should be. And then, yeah there <laughs> and that that's kind of for for the soul um yeah it was just really like a cleanse from all the yeah, okay. yeah commercials and all all that like yeah it was really nice yeah so you could really feel the contrast i mean oh yes yeah 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 that's, of course they also have problems in yeah say that any that it's perfect but uh, if compare what what's better if, if it's is i mean they are also poor there but not maybe as poor jamaica for example uh, all kids go to school they don't have to sell drugs i mean yeah you, yeah. you can always compare things um and it's very interesting to uh and uh, to to have been able to to see that and to you know in that yeah. And, and we are so used to having everything all the time and we can choose like oh what um yeah what kind of now i don't eat cheese but we say cheese what kind of cheese do i want do i want the french cheese do i want the greek yeah. cheese do i want no you have like maybe two cheeses to choose from maybe that's fine you know you have yeah. the local you know and uh, i remember when we were we were going uh, to the breakfast and like uh, yeah we would like some coffee no the coffee com comes on on thursday so you have to wait for two days okay we wait for the coffee you know yeah. <laughs> we're so used to having everything all the time in just a few seconds so it's yeah. another tempo it's another like yeah yeah it's another rhythm yeah yeah, yeah. and um yeah we're we're super spoiled and that, that, that's not good for the environment too like to have so much choices all the time that we have yeah and we're also confusing that with freedom freedom which is not exactly yes. yeah so yeah. yeah the concept of freedom that's that's really like modern history is uh, big and yeah, basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, that was all on my part. Uh, thank you very much. It was really interesting. Hey, come on now. Everybody, yeah, if you drink with me.